So in this tutorial, I just want to go over uh, the relationship you may have between concentration and time um, when dealing with reaction rates. Now at times you are going to need to see you know, how a re reactant concentration is going to change over a period of time. Um, and the way that you could possibly do that is by using the reaction that I gave you below, you know, just basically right here, where it's just basically natural log of the concentration at the particular time over the initial concentration equals K, which is your rate constant, and then T, which is your time. You know, so basically with these type of problems, you're just going to substitute in the data that they give you to be able to figure out something like this. And usually when you're talking about this type of relationship, you're going to be dealing with first order reactions only. So here's your first example. Um, in this case, you have a decomposition of N2O5 taking place, and it's decomposing into its substances, which are NO2 and O2. It's a first order reaction, so meaning you aren't going to have any coefficients or any exponents. It's always going to be just one to one. And you have a rate constant, in this case, of 4.8 times 10 to the negative 4. So that would be your K, once you start putting in your, um, or substituting in your values. Now, they gave you an initial concentration of 1.65 times the negative 2. They want to know what the concentration is going to be after 825 seconds. So at this point, separate out these two questions, because they are two different questions you're going to be dealing with. Um, and now let's go over the first one first. So just plug in what they give you. you know, so natural log equals the concentration over the particular amount of time that they give you, which you don't know, so just put X. That's going to be over the concentration um, initially, so 1.65 times 10 to negative 2. That's equal to negative rate constant, so 4.8 times 10 to negative 4. And that's going to be multiplied by the time, which is 825. Now, to be able to figure something like this out, I recommend that you multiply everything on the right side first, and then take the analog of it. So if you multiply those two numbers together, you end up with a value of 0.396. So just take, like I said, the analog of it. So e to the negative 0.396. Whatever you do on the right side, you have to do on the left side as well. But if you do that, you'll be able to get rid of the natural log that you see there. So it just ends up being like that. Now just do out the math for that. So if you were to go and take um, this value here, and then multiply it with a 1.65 times the negative 2, you end up with an x equal to 0 0.0111 for the concentration. So that's going to be the concentration of N2O5 after 825 seconds. That takes care of the first question. Second question here is asking how long it would take for the concentration of N2O5 to decrease to this particular value um, and they give you an initial value of here. You know, so basically um, just ignore what you just did. You know, this will be a completely different problem or completely uh, separate problem from what you did before. Same using the same equation though, so it's just going to be the natural log of your concentrations, concentration at the particular time, which in this case is 1 times 10 to the negative 2. That's going to be over your initial value, which is 1.65 times 10 to the negative 2, equals the rate constant, which you can use the same rate, uh, rate constant as you did, so negative 4.8 times 10 to the negative 4, and you'll be looking for t. You know, so just take the natural log on the left side and then divide it by the 4.8 times 10 then get 4 to be able to get the T. And if you go and do that out, you should end up with a time of 10.43 seconds. Alright, so for this next example, uh, in this case they give you an initial concentration of HCl for, of 0.1. And then at a particular temperature, or a particular time, actually, at 230 seconds, this is reduced to 0 0.075. And then, then this problem goes on to ask what the concentration of 
the HCL is going to be after 540 seconds. You know, so you have you actually have a couple of things going on here. Um, the first thing you need to do uh, before you can figure out the concentration of hydrochloric acid at this second time is to figure out what your rate constant is. You know, otherwise you'll have two variables um, that you'll have to solve for. You know, and you don't want to have to do that. So the first thing you should do is just take the natural log of the two initial uh, the two concentrations that they initially gave you. So, for example, they gave you it at 0 .7, uh, 0 0.075 at a time of 230 seconds. And then the initial concentration was 0 0.1. That's equal to negative K, which you don't know, but you do know uh, the particular time, which is 230 seconds. So just go about solving this and finding K, which which is 1.25 times 10 to the negative 3. So that takes care of the first thing. We figured out the rate constant. Now we can go and figure out the concentration at the time of 540 seconds. And you do that by, you know, natural log. You're looking for this concentration up top. You have the initial as 0.1. And that's equal to the rate constant that you just figured out times the time that you, they want uh, to figure out this concentration at, which in this case it's 540. So just as you did with the previous, and actually this is negative, so just as you did with your previous example, um, multiply everything on the right first, then take the analog of both sides so that you end up with x.1 equals um, 0 0.509 so then just multiply the 0.1 and the 0 0.509 and you end up with x equal to 0 0.0509 for the concentration at the 540 seconds